this working? All right. Hopefully this is working. All right. Hey, uh, I'm Nathan. I'm a full-time software developer. So most of the time my day is spent um, writing, reading, or like refactoring, editing code. Um, so I'm on my computer a lot, and then I also tend to do a lot of like programming side projects. So I tend to be typing a lot, and I've been do using programming since I was like a little kid. Um, so for the most part, it looks pretty similar to what you know a regular desk. But when I'm working at my desk, um, it usually ends up looking a lot like this. Um, since I use, I don't use a keyboard. Um, I use here. I actually I usually do use a mouse. I have my eye tracker set up in this picture. Um, it doesn't work perfectly, so I still use a mouse a lot of time. But um, a lot of times people wonder why my desk is missing a keyboard. As usually that's there. Um, about three years ago, um, I developed a repetitive stress injury. Um, during the COVID, I tended to be on my computer a lot more. So that probably is what agitated it. Um, but not great when I have a full-time job doing software development. Uh, made it quite hard to work full-time. Um, I tried a couple of different things. I tried switching from QWERTY layouts like Colmac or Dvorak. Um, I tried like using a split keyboard for a little bit that I borrowed from somebody. Um, eventually got to a point where I was not being able to play video games on the side or anything somewhat related to using my hands. Um, had to end up using a wrist brace anytime I was on the computer. Some points I was using two on e one on each hand because um, it got so bad. Um, so uh, was yeah it wasn't tenable, and I was starting to wonder what I was going to do. Um, so I started looking around. Eventually came across um, a piece of software called Talon. Um, their tagline, I'm not sure if this is their actual tagline, if I made this up. I wrote this speech a little while ago. Um, it's full, fast and accurate speech recognition. Um, the guy who made it has trained his own voice recognition AI on it, um, specifically for the task of understanding commands. Um, and they're all completely customizable out of the box. It doesn't really come with anything. They provide you a sort of file-based command definition system. Um, you can also hook it up to Python, and then you can run whatever kind of crazy stuff you want based on the commands. Um, but there is like a large community built package that pretty much everybody uses. It's kind of like a monolith. It has commands for, it has probably, I don't know if it's th thousands, but it's probably pretty close for general computer usage, um, for different specific programs. Like you can launch program, they have ones for launching programs. They have program specific ones. Like there's. I use a Slack one a lot for getting to different panels in Slack, like Slack Unread would take me to the Unreads page, um, stuff like that. Um, but I mostly needed it for programming. Um, you know, because it's one thing to like open up a window and then use my mouse to click around in Chrome. That's not that, not that big of a change. Um, but for typing out a whole code base is quite a bigger challenge. Um, so, um, oops, that's the wrong one. So first of all, you're going to need to be able to like type anything at all. So instead of typing on keyboard, I have a there's an alphabet that we've developed. Um, it's kind of interesting because a lot of people tend to think that I would just spell it like using A B C D whatever. Um, but if you start doing that, a lot of letters sound very similar, which is much harder to, to tell apart, and you end up having a lot of errors, um, which is like the biggest issue with it is making sure you're not having conflicting sounds so that it's detecting the right thing. So we have a unique alphabet. Um, instead of using something like NATO, which has way too many syllables to be used effectively, we have a alphabet that's, for the most part, uh, single syllables and unique. They're pretty similar to the you know, air back cap. There's some weird ones like X gets plex because I don't know of any other X words that would work. Um, this is my notes here. Where was I? Make sure I'm not skipping ahead. Um, yeah, so this and then. Some short names like names for like all the different kinds of brackets, all the different kinds of like symbols you would use in coding, um, and you can get pretty much there. You move, you know, move the cursor around, um, so you can just like spell it out. And this is how I started doing it when I first installed it. Um, wasn't the fastest, you know, using my mouse to click around to get to points in the code, spelling out what I wanted, saying delete a whole bunch to clear out code. So that's the fastest. So I started learning how to do more transcription-based stuff um, because Talon has Nothing out of the box and it's completely customizable and uses Python. A lot of developers are drawn to it, so a lot of the community are also developers. So they have a lot of these 
um, shortcuts for typing stuff. So if you want to say type out a very like camel case, snake case, you can say like camel my variable name, and you'll end up with that you know camel case whatever you said afterwards. Um, so that you can say out lots like a lot longer parts. There are some other shortcuts for like defining a function, and then it detects like what co what kind of code you're in, and it can format the extraneous parts, you know, like in JavaScript, you'll have function or whatever. Python, it puts the def before it, so you don't have to spell out everything. So that speeds up of quite a bit, um, but I need to go even faster. I was very fast coding beforehand, before on my keyboard, um, and it was not so much fun going so slow, having to like spell out most stuff. Um, so um, the biggest breakthrough in speed um, comes from when you realize like a lot of the stuff that you're writing isn't completely unique. A lot of it, you're using the same parameters, the same um, properties or functions or whatever. So if you were able to bring, like copy it instead of having to spell it out every time, that makes things a lot faster. So in addition to Talon, there's an extension called Cursorless. Um, this is from their website, I believe. It's a voice coding language that can operate on your code at a structural level without the need for a mouse cursor. There is still a cursor, even though the name is Cursorless. So this one is a little bit hard to describe, so I'm just gonna do an example. I thought about doing a live demo, but I didn't wanna hook up a microphone that controls my computer in a public setting, and I wasn't sure how quiet it would be from <laughs> Telus downstairs. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this will be a slideshow demo. <laughs> yeah. So this is the markdown, so I wrote this, I wrote these slides in markdown, so this is the markdown from the slide just before this. Um, you see, it's a quote from all my coworkers whenever I share stuff. Um, so you can see that we ha I have these, all these dots over my code, um, and they're all, they're all unique. So you see down here, there's like a gray dot down here over the F in four. So my letter for F is fine. So if I were to say it's f the word fine would be a reference to that specific token, that word for. Um, there's a couple of different ones. So six up at the top would be 60. Um, so every, every token in code, for the most part, gets it. Um, I usually have additional shapes, so that I have shapes and colors. That's why like the A down there in the bottom between four and mouse doesn't have one, because it ran out of colors to use on A's. But using those, you can like reference just about anything. So there's like four. The need, the need right next to it has a pink dot, so it would be like pink near. Um, so, I can, so you can reference code that way, and then you can perform actions on it by you combining it with those references. Um, so I think the example I have is, I want to change voice coding language to voice programming language. Um, I would have to first um, be able to target, so coding is, has, a red over, has a red dot over the D, so it's red drum, and there is an action called change. So if I say, I just clicked the wrong thing. So if I were to say change red drum, it will delete the word coding and put a cursor there, and then can follow it up by saying word programming to just type out one word, and it would put programming there. Um, so normally I would like chain them together, so I'd go back here, I would have said change red drum word programming, and it would hop right to there. And, yep, that was my next one. And then it changes to help out with the speed. It changes to focus the, the, the colors to where your cursor is so that the tokens around where your cursor is get plain dots, and then it moves to colors. If you had shapes enabled, it would also move to shapes. And then colored shapes, as the names get longer, they get further away from your cursor so that you can hopefully use simpler names to target the stuff that's nearby. Um, so that's a pretty basic example, but there are a lot of actions and a lot of different ways you can target things. So you can also do ranges. So for example, one range would be like, if I wanted to change voice programming language, um, I could say like change vest, which is V, past look, and it would select all of a voice programming language and remove it. It has a couple ones, if anybody's familiar with Vim, it has before, it's past, it has a couple of different versions that are kind of similar to Vim commands where you can target around the tokens. Um, it has some modifiers. Um, this isn't a great example for it, but one that I use a lot is called paint, and it will select tokens that are adjacent with no white space. So you might use it like if you wanted to target the level that has the comma after it, you could say paint each, 
and it would target both the level and the comma that comes after it, even though they have the separate token, even though they have separate tokens and they have their own individual dots. So that gets like a pretty good with ranges and different target scopes. And once you learn all the actions, which there are way more than I know, even though I've been using this for like almost two years, I think it came out. I've been using it, still don't know most of the commands. Um, but I mentioned it mentions the structural level. It even has some structure knowledge built into it. So um, as long as the language is supported, and most of them are at this point, it uses the tree sitter library, if anybody's familiar with it. So it's pretty easy to add in new languages, um, since that already supports pretty much everything. Um, they have a little visualizer. So in, in VS Code, you can turn on this little visualizer to show some of the more complex um, scopes, I believe they're called. So this is the func scope for function. Um, it highlights the whole thing so that you can, when learning, I've been using this a lot to learn some of the additional scopes that they have. Um, so the func scope is also something that you can target. So there's like the word uh, console there, has it over the C, so it's cap. So if you were to, so chuck is like another action, it just deletes whatever is there and doesn't put your cursor there. So you could chuck cap and it would throw out the console, part console, or you could say chuck func cap and it will throw out the entire function that's inside of. You can also do, and the scopes even have subscopes. So functions have an interior. You can also say inside func, so like chuck inside func cap would target the C and then chuck everything inside of the function that it's a part of. So in this case, it would chuck that one console log line. So there's like a huge scope, much too deep to get into, and I don't, like I mentioned, I don't know a lot of them still, but there's a lot of actions and a lot of them go very deep into what they can do uh, once you get the hang of it. So, um, I don't really have, like I said, there's a really good example on the uh, website for it, that if anybody wants to see it, you can come up to me and we can watch it afterwards. It's very impressive, and much more impressive than anything I can actually use it for, but. Um, and then the other thing that helped me out a lot is AI. So every good talk has to have AI in it these days. So, and unsurprisingly, AI is extremely helpful. Um, I wish that it had came out, like I said, three years ago. I was when I started having issues. Um, I really wish that I had Copilot at the time, because now I don't even have to type, like, spell out or type all that much, because as long as Copilot or whatever I'm using can get most of the way there, it's a lot easier to edit the code using Cursorless. So I'll just have it throw whatever the heck it generates and then just tweak it to what it actually works um, is generally how it goes. It makes it a lot, a lot easier to work with. Um, so. Um, yeah, that was about it. So it was like pretty high level, but it's kind of hard to get into without some examples. But if anybody wants some examples, I'd be more than happy to do some more afterwards. Um, or you can look, there's talentvoice.com to get started with talent, and then cursorless.org, and the homepage is pretty much just a demo video if you're interested in seeing more. Thank you. Um, I just use the default ones. I don't know how they did to chose those. Yeah, let me see. When I went back when I went to the public college, it was an international accepted word for the use of the letter. Mm hmm. But they might be full of it. Yes, exactly. You don't need to pair it there. Mm hmm. So did you choose single syllable because it was faster? Yeah, so obviously speed is the main concern. Okay. So single. Um, Oops, I'm on the wrong slide. There we go. There's six of them, um, but they're all they are they were all chosen specifically to be unique sounding. Um, so none of them sound very close. Some people do have to tweak them, especially if they have uh, accents other than like an American accent. Um, a lot of people will tweak them. Either they don't say R's very clearly um, is the main one that I see people change them for. So if they can't say R's very well, they ch they'll change air to maybe be something else. Um, or they just have trouble remembering. Some people have just different words because they just have other words that they remember better. Um, I go with like the default, like the most optimal chosen set that the com that that community package that I mentioned um, starts with. The default. That's what I wanted to ask you. You have air or air. Mm -hmm. What if I say hair? 
Uh, well, you would probably not use that as a command. If you said hair, it would probably, yeah, if you said hair, it would probably, I, it would probably go to air because it will try to find a close, if there's a close enough command, um, in which case every alphabet letter is its own singular command. So hair would probably go to air, just because the H is silent, quiet enough. Um, yeah. Yeah, it'll try to find something that was close. Not Talon, no. No. Yeah? So you talk about how the speech is being issued with part of it, right? Mm -hmm. And then we sort of got a lot faster at it. Did there be anything else that changed in your guys' programming like this? Like, did, are you more thoughtful about like, the certain ways or like, is the actual process of coding still different for you doing this? Um, I probably, yeah, I, I, I put stuff into my editor less, yeah, I would say. Um, at least up until Copilot came out. Now I probably put a lot more into my <laughs> editor and then delete it. Yeah. <laughs> I do the monkey shapes too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. How long did it take you to get proficient in the stuff you did uh, Alan Burr and then certainly like mm -hmm. processing it? How long did it take you from the time that you were yeah. installed it and like knowing? Um, took me about a week to get really good at the alphabet. Now I use it to spell things even to other people who have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, curse, and then when Curseless, um, it was kind of new when I started. It probably took me like two months to get pretty good at it, and I'm still getting better at it. But I would say after probably like three or four months, I was probably, I was probably committing the same amount of code as I was before in the same amount of time. Yeah, Greg again, I'll go first. Uh, Talon is not open source, but it is free to use. They have a beta you can pay for if you want bleeding edge features. Um, but it is free to use. Um, the guy has a Slack you can get on, so I talk to him sometimes. Yeah. You mentioned using programming all the time. I don't, you said BIM, I use BIM almost all day. Uh, I find it kind of fun sometimes to learn new things, right? And learning a new one every once in a while. Has that been your experience with this? This, is, this was more fun to use learn than Vim, at least. I'll say that. <laughs> this is more fun to use it. It feels it feels cool when you start like rattling off a bunch of commands. And you yeah. you like start you're, sounding you're, like you're doing incantations or something. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Vim follow up. Yeah. About that. Um, there is a dictation, there's the command mode where you use commands. That's all I basically ever stay in. There is a dictation mode. This isn't part of Curseless, it's just part of the set, the community set, I believe. Um, but dictation, dictation mode will kind of try to act like your phone does when you do voice to text, where it like input, it puts in periods and stuff like that. Um, I don't use it very often because I'm not like typing messages that much. But um, there isn't a mode like that in Curseless. No. <laughs> Not that I know. I mean, I've never looked, I guess, but. No, I just don't like giving presentations very much. <laughs> it might have helped, though, with doing this. It may have helped, it may help, it, that may be why I adapted to this so quickly. I would say it, de it definitely was not because of this. Yeah. Do you find your voice getting tired during the day? It used to, yeah. It was a problem for a little while. Um, I know some people have, still have problems with it that use it a lot. Um, in that community Slack that I mentioned, I see a lot of people talk about it. Um, for the first, like, few months when I started getting pretty fast at it, I had to like use throat lozenges and stuff occasionally. Um, but it's not too bad, it's fine now. Mm -hmm. I do not have a dog, no. I will not, but maybe, <laughs> eventually. That, that would be the next step up though, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you played with the eye tracking portion of? Uh, yeah, I think I show. I think I, I did have it up when I took this picture. Yeah, you can see my little Toby. They only support two models officially, 4C and 5. Um, it works okay. Um, I know some people are really good at using it. I don't know if it's my glasses or my room lighting, because um, it can be kind of sensitive apparently. Um, it works, but it works okay. They've added head tracking lately, so you can like adjust the cursor slightly by like moving your head up and down and back and forth. Um, in which case, I'm able to use it with that. Mm -hmm. I can I can use it. It's just that now that I'm not typing, it's just easier to use a mouse, and it doesn't cause any issues anymore. Uh, I did, and it was very bad. <laughs> it was garbage, yeah. In voice? Yeah. Or this? Well, in town. In town? What are your challenges? Um, yeah, I don't really have any challenges. It's very smooth. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, the guy who works on it, like I said, it's not open source. It's free to use, but he has a lot of people who pay for the beta, so he works on it full time. Um, he apparently has server racks. We're working on the voice recognition model constantly, um, so it's very good at um, background noise removal um, and understanding what's actually speech, and it's very fast at recognizing commands as well. Um, and then anything else is custom because it doesn't come with anything out of the box. Uh, if you turn it, if you just download and turn it on, it won't do anything. So anything else, uh, I can just tweak. Uh, Greg, first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. It, what? <laughs> nope. It runs okay. locally. Okay. So yep. Mm-hmm. Cursorless is the extension for uh, for coding specifically. Sure. I understand you own the TechMonkey.com repo for the. Uh, I don't think I own it anymore. Oh, okay. Well, you at least, uh, I worked on it. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, I know. I'm just lazy. <laughs> and, uh, as far as mind plug, I don't know. But, uh, um, you know, I, I think you can do with a little more content. If, if oh, yeah. If anyway, you can, you, why don't you open up a PR for it? Go. It's oh, open uh, source. Open source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, almost all of them out of necessity. Maybe not anymore. I, I, I can use, I, I'm fine. I come in the office and work on the laptop now just fine, um, as long as it's not every day. Um, but for most people, um, Slack is very active, but a lot of them, I believe, still do need to use it. Um, yeah, some people, because of RSI, and some people because they can't for, other, for just any other reason. Um, but most of them, they were all there for necessity. I, I don't know if anybody that came for fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, shit. No, that's so messed up. Me. Oh, I just need my cursor to go over there. Joel, are you trying not to have computers as a PI bought the response piece? That'll be the next thing I implement. Responses or profiles? As long as they're good responses, I'm not going to be responses. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's why even though I hate giving presentations on my career, because I feel like I, there's a lot of people that I that just deal with it because they don't know that they could try something else. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>